Welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. Today's episode is all about Christmas in July, and I have 10 Dollar Tree Christmas DIYs for you. They are easy, simple, and beautiful. You guys are definitely going to want to check these out. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. And if you like any of the projects in today's video, remember to hit that thumbs up. But let's go make some DIYs. This next project is a Pinterest inspired project that I saw somebody had built one and I had out of like scrap wood for a tree and I thought, oh, I have a Dollar Tree tree that would be perfect to do this. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through the steps on this. So I just traced this Dollar Tree wood tree on some paper that had a really uh, barn wood looking finish on it. And you can kind of see, I just kind of cut it out there. And then I love Elmer's glue for projects like this. You guys have seen me use this dozens of times, if not more. And I just make sure to pay attention to the edges. So all of the edges will be down really good and then I just go all over the surface of the tree and then I just place this down and line it up as best as I can to make sure that no edges of the uh, wood are showing. I just use my brayer here to make sure that it goes on completely flat. I personally like using this glue stick better than I like Mod Podge. I feel like I have a much higher success rate with it and it is very, I've never had a problem with it peeling up as long as you're using the Elmer's Purple Glue. The Dollar Tree glue that I've seen that's like the Jot brand, I have not had as much success with that. So I just sanded the edges to make sure the paper was clear, but it did make the edge of the paper kind of look torn or that white color. So I just went over the edge with a little antiquing wax. And while I was there, I just made sure to go over the back of it to give it a finished look. And then you can see I just put a little bit of glue into the little hole that was up there and then um, to kind of fill it in and then just put a little antiquing wax over it. So now I'm going to build a little box to go on the bottom of the tree here. So I just had this little square. Um, they do sell little squares at Dollar Tree. This was just a scrap square that I had. And I cut some paint sticks down to be the size to go on the sides of this here. Now, if you wanted to skip this step, you could use just a little sign like that. They sell signs like that at Dollar Tree that you could use all day long and would work just fine. I just didn't have one the exact size that I wanted. And so I thought I would just kind of make my own and show you. So I did just kind of eyeball when I cut these, I kind of laid it down on my painter stick and drew the line of where I needed to cut it. Uh, I actually, uh, these little painter sticks were thin enough that I could cut them with my scissors, but you could use like a little hand saw, miter saw, uh, or if you have a like power miter saw, that would work as well. So now I did just have to file down one of the sides because I didn't quite get the measurement right. So that's why I was using my emery board there to kind of sand it down. And then I just give this a coat of that antiquing wax because it matches that wood on the tree. Absolutely perfect, I thought. And I just cover all sides of it with that wax. So now I'm just going to take this tree and I'm going to add some glue to the spots where that box will touch. And that's how I am just going to put these two together here. And so I just press that box right up against the tree and I'm going to make this a little candle stand. So I'm just showing you that you could just put a plain candle in there and embellish just a plain candle. That's one of the faux candles that I love from Amazon. I'll link those below in my description box. But I wanted to kind of make a little jar candle to put a little tea light down into. And this jar just came from Dollar Tree and I just removed the lid and I had some Dollar Tree ribbon I was showing you but I have this ribbon that I have on my Christmas tree and it kind of matches my decor a little bit more and it just came from Hobby Lobby so I'm just going to layer it with that red buffalo check on the bottom and then actually this green ribbon I believe came from Joann's so I'm just letting you know that but I love this green ribbon it's not quite an evergreen like it's kind of like I don't know I just love the color of it and so after I glue those two together I'm just making a little sprig with some little pieces of picks that I have that I have kind of disassembled and I just wrap some twine around the top of those to get them all pieced together and you could totally skip this step if you wanted to that ribbon looks beautiful as it is and using some twine that I tie on the top there I'm just tying that little piece of evergreen on there and then I will snip all of the tails off there because I decided I did not want any of that and then I just kind of put a little glue on the back of that evergreen there so it would glue to the front and if stay put and wouldn't move around and then I just made a little shoestring bow to go on this and I thought that was so cute you could leave it like this and it would be absolutely beautiful 
but I did have these little stars from Dollar Tree and I'm sorry that you can't see it right here. You'll see it in the finished product. Um, but I just put one of those stars at the top of the Christmas tree. And then I thought this, this is some Baker's twine that I have and you can get this at Dollar Tree also. Um, but I like to buy the red and white on Amazon cause you can actually get more of it for a better deal than you get at Dollar Tree. Uh, the other colors you get at Dollar Tree are definitely a better value, but the red and white, you can get a little bit cheaper other places, but I just wrapped it around the tree and then just tied it off. And that way I didn't have to glue it on. So if I wanted to remove it or I didn't love how it looked, I could do that. But look at how cute that is. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. I absolutely love this. I did add a little tea light into that jar. You cannot see it in this photo, but it adds the most beautiful glow, especially with all those little ridges and marks in that jar from Dollar Tree. So if you find that jar, pick it up to do this project with because it's beautiful. I'm so excited to show you this DIY. It's almost like four DIYs in one, but I love how this turns out. So this cute little sign I found just recently, like this last week at Dollar Tree, it's a cute little laundry sign. And I loved that it had the little pegs on it. And I knew immediately what I wanted to do with it when I saw it. So I just sprayed some water on it and I'm just using my putty knife to scrape off that glue. It may take you a few minutes to get all of that scraped off, but it worked better to scrape it than to sand it in my opinion. Once that dries, I just take a little bit of white chalk paint on a chip brush and I'm just dry brushing this on. I just really wanted a nice faded look to it. So you can paint it a different color if you want or whatever you want to do with it. But that's the style that I was going for. Now I'm taking a sleigh from Dollar Tree. I'm actually going to do three different sleighs here in this DIY. This first one, I'm going to paint the base of the sleigh here, the part that you would write on white. And then I'm going to paint the bottom part of the sleigh here, just in black, just doing a traditional farmhouse palette. And uh, each of the sleighs that I'm doing are each a different type of sleigh also. So if you can find a variation, do that uh, or whatever works or whatever you've got on hand. Now I'm taking some foam core board and I want a wreath to go on one of my sleighs sleighs. And so I didn't have a wreath small enough because these sleighs are kind of teeny. So I just thought I would make my own. The greenery here is just off of the boxwood picks that you pick up at Walmart. I love those boxwood picks. They're so you can use them all year and I feel like you can get so many projects out of them. So definitely when you're at Walmart, look at their florals and pick a couple of those up. You will not regret it. So now I just cut off the littlest teeniest size of the leaves that I could and I just glue them all the way around and fill in all the gaps and everything so you cannot see that and you could use cardboard if you don't have foam core board and something like that and now I'm just taking some little teeny tiny red berries this is also off of a pick that I got at Walmart and I just glued those all the way around just kind of to bring in a little pop of color into that so now moving on to our second sleigh, I am going to stain with just my Waverly antiquing wax, the portion of the sleigh that you would sit on here, like the base of that. And then on the bottom and the name escapes me of what these would be called, like the blades of the sleigh. Maybe I'm painting those black and then I will stipple on some metallic here, silver, because I wanted this to look like maybe it was aged metal was kind of what I was going for. And so I just went all the way around to do that. This cute little deer ornament came from uh, Dollar Tree. It came like two to a pack. So I just took this and put a decent amount of hot glue and just held that down till it was completely dry. I wanted this sleigh to look like it had a little bit of snow on it. So I'm just putting some white chalk paint on a chip brush and I'm just dabbing that up and down. And after I did this and I'm just doing it kind of as if, if the sleigh was propped up against something where the snow would naturally fall. And I decided that the white paint wasn't cutting it. So I take a little Mod Podge. I do the same thing over the paint and then I'm just going to take some glitter and you, this would be completely optional. I know some people do not like glitter, but I just thought that it added a little something to the sleigh and I just sprinkled that glitter over the top of this where that Mod Podge is. And I just shake that off and I just think that adds the perfect touch of snow on there and um and then you just kind of when I, I you can see I pull it upside down and I just tap it all off to get that off of there and I just thought it may look so cute so now I'm taking the third sleigh here and I wanted to do this in a traditional like brown and red metal type of sleigh look here so the base of the sleigh on these um, I'm just taking some red paint and I will get that on the sides here all over the bottom there and then I'll also do that on like the crossbar and you'll see how I do that here in just a second you can see over there and I just thought that that would be really cute. In my mind, that's where the red part of the sleigh would be. And then I just use antiquing wax to do the rest of it. Uh, and so that's how that goes. And for some reason, in my mind, that little piece, it was like a piece of wood that would be going up that that metal would fasten to. So that's how I 
that's why I chose to do that. So anyway, I just went ahead around with uh, my little emery board and distressed it so it looked like an aged sleigh. And then I even had like a little bit of black paint on a baby wipe there that I went over where I sanded to kind of give it more of an aged and an older look. I picked up this little Christmas tree. This came from like the little village section that uh, Dollar Tree always has. And I just thought it would be really cute to have this tied onto this sleigh like somebody's bringing their Christmas tree home for Christmas to decorate it. And I'm just kind of pushing the bristles. It's like a bottle brush. So I'm pushing, pushing those bristles out so that way it will lay a little bit flatter against my sleigh. And then I'm just using hot glue. I did take off the snow base of that because it didn't look very realistic, if you will, on there. So I just wrapped the base in some twine to kind of look like the trunk of the tree. And then I glued that on and I decided to glue it on upside down. Like that was how they had placed it. Like it had just kind of fallen over on the sleigh. And I tied it down with some twine to look like the tree was tied down with rope and just put a little teeny bow on the top of that. So now you can see I have this little wreath I'm going to put onto this sleigh and I have this little ornament that came from Walmart. Dollar Tree has some cute little ornaments too that would be darling on there or you wouldn't have to do one at all. I just really like the fact that it had a cute little thing on there to say sleigh ride since I'm kind of going with the sleigh theme on here. And here's all three of these sleighs together. I just think they all turned out so cute. They were so fun to create. So now I'm going back to the base of the sign because we're going to let everybody know that they can park their sleighs here. So I'm just taping some tissue paper to just a regular piece of copy paper. And you just want to make sure that this uh, it's like the dull side is what's up. So there's a shiny side and a dull side to tissue paper. I put the shiny side towards the paper because I want the ink to go onto the dull side of the paper. Now I just fed this through my printer like a piece of paper. I just found some uh, script and wrote this in Word, put it through. I have an inkjet printer, not a laser printer. I just make sure that that ink is very, very dry before I put any Mod Podge. And you can see how the ink kind of bleeds through onto the paper. Now I'm taking a little brush with some water on it and I'm just going around the uh, parking, the sleigh parking and just ripping that. This will give it a natural edge rather than a cut edge. And that way when you Mod Podge this down, it will kind of disappear into the background. So I just do a thin layer of Mod Podge and I'm having a very hard time holding onto the sign. But you, I wanna do this all over. So when you do this, make sure the Mod Podge goes all over, not just where your words go because you want the sheen and the finish to look cohesive. And then I just did my best to eyeball how I wanted that centered. And then I work from the middle out with just dabbing my finger and making sure there are no wrinkles or anything. And I just kind of go up to the edge and then you can kind of say I pull it taut there and then keep doing that. And if, if your tissue paper will allow you to kind of pick it up, if you get a wrinkle or two, do it. But if you feel that it's going to start to tear, just embrace the wrinkles and just let it be a part of the sign. So I take a little bit of Mod Podge and I go over the edge, not over the ink. I'm just going over the edge. Now, if this had dried for several days, I could probably go over the ink and be fine, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to seal this instead. I have this clear glaze Krylon and I'm just going to spray this over the top and I just make sure this goes all over to give the same sheen and just a little spritz on there. And then I let that dry completely. Then after that's dry, I just take a little bit of white paint and on my little brush, just very lightly dry brush over the letters to make it blend into the background of that sign. I just think that is super cute. I'll link the font name if I can down in my description box. And then I stained those cute little pegs and I just screwed those back on and hung these little sleighs from it. And you guys, I think this turned out so, this might be one of my favorite Christmas crafts ever. It's so cute. It was so fun. You can personalize it. You could have all of like your kids or your grandkids decorate a cute little sleigh to hang from it. So when next time you're at Dollar Tree, pick up one of those laundry signs and look for some cute little sleighs. Or even if you had different ornaments you wanted to decorate to hang from it, it would be so cute. I love picking up signs like this at the craft stores. These particular ones came from Dollar Tree. It doesn't ever matter what they say because I'm always going to make them over. So I just peeled the paper back and it leaves a little bit of this backing that's been glued onto this. And these are not the wood signs from Dollar Tree. These are more like of a composite material. So I just spray them with water and let them soak for a few moments. And then you'll see that this just peels right off. And even though like the top layer kind of peels off, as you can see here, if you spray it again and let it sit, for just maybe another minute you'll be able to take your scraper and as you see it will just scrape right off of there it's kind of actually pretty satisfying getting all of that off of there it is a little bit sticky with the glue so you do just want to wash your hands after so you don't get glue on everything 
The shortest of these signs was about 10 inches and I'm going to leave that as is. I won't be cutting that one. It will be the bottom of my stack here. The next one I will cut down to eight inches and then I cut one down to six inches. And then that left a little piece off of the one that I end up putting on the top that is four inches. So I just go down two inches on each. So there's, if that makes sense, hopefully you can see there, there's an inch on each side. Now my top two tiers of this little snowman stack that I am making, I will paint black. This is going to be the hat portion of my snowman. And I'm just using some chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree. One coat did very good coverage on these, so I didn't have to do that. Uh, I'm just using some white chalk paint here on the bottom two stacks. It did take about three coats to get the coverage that I wanted. Now I just need to glue my little snowman face together here. So I'm just using a combination of E6000 super glue would work too. You could probably even just do hot glue since this won't be getting probably a lot of use other than just sitting on a shelf. I just thought I would make it a little bit more of a permanent hold if it fell over or anything. I don't know. I just thought the E6000 added a little bit of an extra bond on there. So that's up to you. I know a lot of people comment that they cannot stand the smell of E6000, which it definitely has an odor, but it doesn't bother me too much. Anyhow, I'm just gluing this all together here, each stack, just making sure that I get it uh, so it's all even. And then I have these little wooden discs. I got this in a package. I bought a like a big box of craft materials material at a yard sale. However, be creative. If you find something like bingo chips or something like that at the Dollar Tree, use something like that. Uh, you could even just use wooden half beads or something if you happen to have those. Uh, be creative. Anything will work. Now I'm just taking a paint stir stick and I am just using my scissors to cut out a carrot nose, just kind of a triangle shape. And as you saw, my scissors cut through there pretty decently. And so I was able to get that shape, very rustic look, which is what I was going for. I'm going to paint my carrot orange and then I am going to paint some little teeny ridges on my carrot there to kind of give it a little bit of dimension. Now after I dry those I go back over with the orange paint to kind of make them look a little bit uh, faded so that way they weren't so stark and obvious. Now I just go back in and I'm just using some hot glue to glue on the eyes and the mouth. I like to lay it out before I glue it so I have an idea of where I'm going and make sure everything is spaced right and looks good. And then again, this part I just do with hot glue and it goes rather quickly. So now I just position the nose. I put a little bit of glue along the nose on the back. I did not want that nose to hang over the edge. So I put it right up to the edge there, but I didn't want it to like get broken off. But that's just up to you. If you want to have it hanging over the edge, that would be really cute as well. So now we're just going to tuck some little foliage into this snowman's cute little hat here. And I'm just using a combination of like little spare parts, if you will, that I have from different picks. So I have like some lamb's ear. There's a little bit of the boxwood. These, those both came from Walmart. These berry picks came from Dollar Tree. And then I have this little evergreen that I'm really, I think it came on a plant that my mom gave me. I don't know. It came from somewhere, but I just got a bunch of little things. When you're doing a little hat like this that you want some variety, you don't have to have like one whole pick. Just you know, use your spare parts, what you've got, and that works great. And I decided to have some glued kind of up towards the top of his hat and some kind of coming down. So when I put that ribbon band on, it looks like some's peeking out below. And I just used some hot glue to put that on the back. This ribbon just came from Dollar Tree. I love this cute little gingham ribbon. And as you see, I'm just gonna flatten that down on the back there. Now I'm going to do a cute little bow here. I just tied a couple loops on a little bow there and put a zip tie in the middle to put on his hat and I thought that bow looked really cute. Now, of course, if a bow is not your style, do not put a bow on there. I had someone comment in my last video that asked if I had to put a bow on everything. Yes, I do have to put a bow on everything because that's what I like. Uh, it might be impossible for me to not put one on there. If it's not your style and you're making this, please make it to how you like it. Now, I'm just taking a little bit of the leftover black paint in my brush and just kind of dry brushing the edges. I wanted to give this a little bit of dimension and I really liked the way that it looked on the nose to kind of help that pop. Now you can go as light or as heavy as you like on this. I don't really consider this like distressing. I feel like this is just more giving it a little bit of dimension. It looked kind of flat with just the white paint there. Or, and then here I take the white that's left over in my brush and I'm gonna go over all of the black parts here. So just over the edges of his hat, kind of looked a little bit like it was frosted there. And then 
then I really like the look going over the little round discs here. It really did make those pop against um, that black against the white there, the edges. It just kind of gave it just a really good dimension and I really loved it. I think this turns out absolutely darling. What do you guys think of him? Would you put him on one of your shelves for this Christmas season? I just love him and I really feel like snowmen are just the essence of winter and Christmas and it is something that you can make as Christmassy as you want but they can also stay up all winter long. I got this darling little house at Dollar Tree. It was part of their nautical line they had in the spring and summer this year. I think it's absolutely darling the way that it is, but I do love kind of giving things a makeover, as you know, and so I'm going to make this a little bit more Christmassy. Now, that roof came right off with just a little bit of love and just a putty knife underneath it. It came off so I could put it right back on. I'm just using some white buffalo check and white and black because that matches my Christmas decor. The fun part about this project is you can do whatever type of craft paper you want whatever design you can even make this for any time of year it does not have to be Christmas now I love using the Elmer school glue stick there you saw the purple glue that if you've been here for a minute you know that that is my most favorite method of getting paper onto things and then you just use an emery board to file off the edges so it gives it a really crisp clean look so I just used some hot glue to glue the little roof back on there and then I thought to add a little Christmas touch because it was a little bit bare from what I'm wanting to do with it I have this little like holly sprig here. You can see the package there. It came from Hobby Lobby. I just thought it would be cute to glue a little bit like mistletoe at the top of the house there. Now this little wood cutout comes from Dollar Tree. So I just painted it white and then I printed a little design on tissue paper. Now I love printing on tissue paper. I'll link in my description box the video where I give you like step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that so you can kind of see. But you could cut a design out on a cutting machine. You could use water slide decal paper if you're good at hand lettering whatever method you want to use to get a design on there or leave it plain tie a cute bow on it anything's going to work for what you want to do for the tissue paper method you just use some decoupage after you printed your design on tissue paper and you just gently press it down working from the middle out and then you'll go back over each of the edges with some mod podge i use my brayer here you want to be so careful when you do this because you could rip that design still because it is very delicate uh, and then you just go over it with some mod podge to seal it in and it is so easy again i'll link that video down in my description box if you're curious on the whole process on how to do that so i like to do a little little bit of three-dimensional look sometimes when I'm gluing pieces together so I'm just gluing a couple of tumbling tower blocks on the edge of this heart or on the back of the heart excuse me so that way it pops out a little bit from the house now once I got done with this I kind of wish that I had moved that heart a little bit up so I know it's maybe not the best placement but it, it was glued down pretty good I didn't want to have to tear it apart to do it so so if you're not a fan of where it's glued on there I know <laughs> but it looks okay I mean in the end it's okay but since I did a three-dimensional look to it, I just take some of these little greenery picks that I have here and some berries, and I just tuck those in behind the heart on the side to kind of cover up a little bit of that negative space there uh, where that plaid is, kind of bring a little bit more of a Christmas feel into it. It kind of softens it a little bit, I think. So I just thought this was cute. I love that little saying, all hearts come home for Christmas. I thought that was super cute. And again, sticking with the red truck theme, I love that. Now, some of my berries had a little bit of uh, the red part scraped off. So just a little touch of red paint will be enough to kind of cover that up. And I do, I like to add a little bit of dimension. Uh, so I just took some antiquing wax and went around the edge of that heart to kind of give it a little bit more of a dimension rather than just the stark white. But all in all, I think this turns out really cute. I love the saying on it. It will be darling for a Christmas tiered tray. What do you guys think of this one? I'm just taking this cute little chalkboard sign from Dollar Tree. It's got that darling little buffalo check fabric on the back and then the front portion is just a chalkboard. And then I also have this little truck ornament that came from Dollar Tree. They've had these the last couple of years so hopefully you can find some. But I just used some wire cutters to cut off the portion that says Merry Christmas. I'll probably just save that for another DIY. I just want the truck for this. Now I'm just taking my putty knife and I am gently going underneath this chalkboard portion here. I'm I'm doing this very slowly it is sped up a little bit because I just want to make sure that it doesn't break or rip or anything like that I will be placing it back on so the fact that you can see that little glue strip on there does not make a difference at all now I take two of these evergreen picks from Dollar Tree. They come in like a pack of 12. I've seen them at Dollar General. I believe I've seen them at Walmart. So hopefully you can find some at one of these stores or have some in your stash, or you can even just like um, dismantle like a 
garland or something like that to have some. So I just wrap two together and make an oval shape and I just keep matching it up to the size of my chalkboard so you can see enough of it around the edges. And then I did take my scissors and kind of give it a little trim around the edges so that way it wasn't, I don't know, I think it just makes it look a little bit better if you trim a little bit of it off so it doesn't look so shaggy. So I did that. Now I have, these are from Walmart and I think it's called like a winter cedar berry or juniper berry or something like that. I found it in their floral section, but it has these little teeny tiny red berries on it. And I think they're so cute. And I just kind of put, um, picked a little bit of the ends off of each of one of them. And then I'm just gluing it around kind of in an oval motion. So that way they all kind of face the same direction. I thought that looked really cute with that evergreen pick. It kind of helps lift it up off of there. And then I'm just putting some hot glue around the ring on the back of this. And you'll see here, I just carefully place that on. Now you can kind of see if you can, I don't know, but I, I glue it on upside down when I go to put my chalkboard on <laughs> because the holes they hang my sign up are facing the bottom right now where they really need to be facing the top. Anyhow, you'll see me fix that in a minute here. But I just go around anywhere that my little uh, cedar berries are sticking up or I want them to stick down more then I just use my hot glue to help hold those down. Now I take four tumbling tower blocks and glue two together and then the two on top of each other if that looks okay there and then I glue that down on top. This is going to help give that three-dimensional look. It helps pop out that chalkboard sign. So now I just match up where I want that truck and I just use some hot glue around the edges there and then I just eyeball it. Well, you can see I'm going to drop it first <laughs> and then I eyeball it and get it all where I want. Now you can use any one of these for a hanger. You can see I'm just going, this came from Hobby Lobby, um, but maybe it came from Walmart. I'm not really sure. I'll have to look, look down in my description box and I'll let you know, cause I can't recall right now where I picked this up from, but I do love the green and the red on there. It did come from Walmart. It's just coming to me now that I remember actually picking it up there. So Walmart is where I got this. Now you can find the pit berry at the Dollar Tree too and use that totally fine. Just putting back the twine hanger on here will be fine also. Now you can see that I realize now like, oh, whoops, I put this on backwards. So I just stick my putty knife up underneath that tumbling tower block and where the glue was. The glue had dried pretty good at this point, but I was able to get it off and I'll just stick some glue on it and flip it around. So, you know, no harm, no foul. It looks totally fine. Now, after I get this centered and put down in the correct place that I want it, I will just thread this little pitberry garland through one side and then just twist it around. So that's what's going to help it stay. Now, if you do plan on hanging this somewhere that it's going to get a lot of wind or anything, this wire will stretch and get longer and longer. So you do may want to use some twine in that case, but I just thought this was really cute. It's just going to hang maybe on my pantry door or just on, like layered on another wreath or something. But I think for a cute little design, this turned out so cute. What do you guys think of this one? Do you like it? Are you guys on Instagram? If you are, I would love if you would come and find me. I am Farm Charm Chic over there. I'll leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. But come and see what I'm working on. I post there quite a bit. I like to show you things that I'm working on or when I have videos ready. It's just another place to stay in touch. So if you do come find me, remember to send me a DM and say hi because I do love meeting new friends. I think these little cutting boards that you're finding at Dollar Tree right now are absolutely adorable. These are found in their crafter's corner, kind of in the unfinished wood stuff that they have. I've seen them at my Dollar Tree several times. Actually, a few of the Dollar Trees that I have been to over the last few months, I've seen them. So hopefully you've been able to find them at yours. If not, I always just tell people, just keep checking, they'll eventually come. And always check dollartree.com also, but remember on dollartree.com to ship to your store. It saves you a lot of money instead of having to pay shipping to your home. Now that is being said, all I'm doing on this is I just paint the bottom portion white and I go up the handle just a little bit and then I'm painting the rest of the handle here with black. And the black covers really good. This is just chalkboard paint. I only needed to do one coat on that. The white, I did have to do two coats. And then I'm just taking a paint stir stick. This is one that I had used. I'd cut the end off for another project. I just cut it down and I just eyeballed the size. I'm making this cute little snowman and I just wanted this to be kind of the brim of his hat. And so I just eyeballed it. I don't have an exact measurement on what I did. I just laid it down and kind of went 
that looks like a good size and that's where I cut it. So I just kind of wanted a little ski wampus there. I thought that looked kind of cute there and just using some hot glue, I put that down on the cutting board itself and then I just glue that little brim of his hat right down there. And you can kind of see it coming together hopefully already. And I did just get a little bit of smudging on that black so I just kind of went over it with a little what was left on the brush there to cover that up. Now I have these half beads. These came from Amazon. I can link them down in my description box below. And um, I, these are just kind of a smaller size. And I thought they would be really cute to kind of look like pieces of coal for his eyes and his mouth. So I'm just going over them with some black paint and just making sure I get all of the edges and everything. And then on another paint stir stick, I am just cutting out a carrot nose. And I'm just kind of going from the end and cutting in towards the center at an angle, just like the shape of a carrot. And it just cut very easily with my scissors and I was able to get that shape out. And then I did go in and sand it a lot with my uh, emery board to get rid of any rough edges or anything like that. Next, I just glue with some hot glue the eyes and the mouth on and I just kind of space them out just by eyeballing it. And on this cute little carrot nose, I'm just using some orange paint to give it that carrot color. And then after I get that completely covered, I wanna make some little ridges on the carrot just to make it give it a little dimension, make it look like an actual carrot. This is just some mineral chalk paint that I'm using with just a little flat brush here. Uh, and you just kind of, just what looks good is what I'm doing. You could completely skip this if you were a little bit afraid to kind of go in or do this and I do like a couple and then a grouping of three and just kind of offset them all the way down the edge of the carrot. Now after that completely dries I go back in with a little bit more orange paint and just kind of cover them to dull them down so they're not quite so stark and that way they look a little bit more um like they're part of the carrot, if that makes sense. I don't know. I always say if that makes sense, but hopefully you can see what I'm showing there. Sometimes I can't find the exact words that I want to use. And then I'm just going to use some hot glue on the back of this carrot, and we're going to glue it onto the face of our snowman. This cute little wooden snowflake came from a pack of wooden stickers from Dollar Tree. I just cover it with some white chalk paint and then after that dries, put some Mod Podge on it and I put a little bit of uh, glitter on there. I just thought that would be kind of a fun little thing for this little snowman's hat to have a shiny little snowflake there. This little piece of holly came from a pack of 12 from Hobby Lobby and then I glue that on and then I glue this cute little snowflake on the brim of his hat and I thought that was just the perfect little embellishment. I just think this little snowman turns out absolutely adorable. He would be perfect for a tiered tray or just anywhere you wanted this cute little snowman to smile back at you. For this particular project, I'm just using a piece of scrap wood that I have. I picked up a box of scrap wood from a yard sale that I went to this summer. So I have some fun pieces and different shapes to do things with. So I'm just going to coat this. On the back, I'm gonna give this a few coats of white to make sure that it looks good from all angles. On the front, I just did around the edges where you would see. Now I'm taking this 2023 calendar from Dollar Tree and I'm taking this December page from it. I absolutely love this wreath. I think this page looks so farmhouse. I love the little wood look in the background. I think that this is so cute and I thought it would be darling to have this somewhere in my home as decor. So I'm just going to fold over the edges because the calendar page is a little bit bigger than my scrap piece of wood that I have. So after I bend those down, I'm just going to trim them off a little bit just with my little trimmer here. So that way I will be able to fit it all the way onto this block of wood. Now I cut it a little bit smaller than the block of wood because I did want a little bit of that paint to show through. I kind of wanted it to look a little rustic that way so of course tailor it to whatever size that you're doing but I thought this was really fun now I am just putting down here a coat of Mod Podge before I place this down um, a moment ago you saw me I just the, covered up the little calendar hole I had taken a piece that I had trimmed off and I just used some Elmer's glue to glue that on to cover up that little hole and you cannot even see that it's there so now I'm just lining up my page with where I want the edges to fall on my piece of wood on the background there. And I just put a thin coat of Mod Podge on there and then I do grab my Mod Podge roller or my brayer and I just kind of roll over that to make sure that I can get it as flat as possible. Now you can see there are a few little wrinkles that did develop there. The calendar pages, they really do um, not respond the best to the Mod Podge. And I know there's a lot of different techniques out there, so definitely try that. You could even just use your Elmer's glue stick, which is what I mostly use but I kind of like to change it up a little bit but you can see that while that Mod Podge was still wet I was able to peel back carefully the pages if you feel at all like those pages are going to tear stop and don't do that just embrace the wrinkles if they're there 
um, I've seen, I've heard people use like um, cling wrap or something like that to kind of rub on. Now I'm just taking a little bit of white paint and dry brushing over it to make it look like it was kind of a part of that wood. And then I do take a thin layer of Mod Podge and place over the top of this just to make uh, sure that calendar page is sealed. So that way if any moisture or anything was to get on this, it wouldn't bubble up, it would protect it. And I thought it would be really cute to just wrap a little bit of twine around this at the top. So I just kind of wrap it in th just do three little wraps around kind of in different ways so you can see it's layered there. And I just tie it off in the back and place a little bit of hot glue so that's not going to move anywhere. I really love adding different types of embellishment and texture to different projects and I thought the twine was perfect for this one. So you can kind of see how it comes to a point in the middle there. I'm just taking some twine, wrapping it around my fingers and tying it off in the middle to make a little shoestring bow. And then I will just glue that into the center of the twine with just a little bit of hot glue. And I think this turns out so cute. It looks just like those little strands of twine were tied on with that. And I leave my tails a little bit longer because I really like the way that that looked. For how absolutely simple this DIY was, look at how beautiful it is. I am so excited to use this in my home. What did you guys think of this one? This is just one of those chalkboard little stand frames that you get at Dollar Tree. It has a little piece on the back to help it stand up. And I'm just going to, I'm gonna paint the frame. So I'm just using some painter's tape to go around the inside of this because I wanna make sure the inside of the frame is painted, but I do not wanna deal with scratching paint off of the chalkboard surface itself. So I just make sure I line all of that up exactly how I want. And I'm going to go with just a classic red. I am using chalk paint, but acrylic paint, whatever paint you have, whatever color you wanna do, will work just fine. So I do go around all of the edges of this and I also paint the back of it. That way when you see it from all angles, it looks completely finished. Now I'm just peeling back that painter's tape and there's always, it's always so fun to peel that back and see that everything looks great. Now I have these stickers from Dollar Tree and I decided to use these because sometimes I use my Cricut for a lot of projects, but I thought it would be fun to kind of do this and show you that you don't have to have a Cricut to do every project, but definitely if you do have access to one and would rather do that or have some different letters you would want to do this with, use that. But I thought these letters looked really cute on this chalkboard here. So I'm just using a J and a Y and I have these little peppermint, um, um, it's a little sprig or floral pick that I got from Hobby Lobby. I bought it when it was 50% off, so it was like $1.50. And I'm just deciding which one I like the best. And I ultimately decide on this one right here. I thought that looked like a classic peppermint candy there. And just using some hot glue, I will just glue that in the middle to make the word joy. I just think that that is so cute. I love that. And I just love the red and white for Christmas with the peppermint. I just think that is so cute. And I decide that it needs a little something extra. You could definitely leave it the way that it was, but I'm just taking some different little floral picks that I have. These are the little evergreen strands that you get in a pack of like 12 from Dollar Tree. I just cut one, a few pieces of it. And then this is just a little bit of boxwood from uh, Walmart. I love to use this. It's like $1.98 and your a sprig will last you for several projects. It is wonderful stuff. So if you're at Walmart, check the floral section to grab this because I absolutely love it and it is so fun to use. And I thought it kind of added a little different element there for Christmas, um, a Christmas texture and everything. Now I have these little berries just from another pick that I've torn apart. So I'm just taking a couple off and I just put a little bit of hot glue onto the end of them and then just stick them in where I think they look best just to bring a little pop of red up to the top there. I felt that looked like a really cute holiday look there. And then I'm just taking these little curly cues also were on a pick that I had, but you could easily make some just with some floral wire. Uh, I thought a lot of times you'll find the floral wire that has the little coating on it there like these. And they, I just thought it added a little bit of texture. I thought it was really cute. I had a lot of fun actually picking out different pieces to put on the top of this. And I thought it was really coming together cute. This ribbon is from Dollar Tree and I just tied a double bow there. And then I'm just going to glue that right in the middle. When I glued it on there, I realized that the tails were a little bit long for how I wanted. So I do go in and kind of just cut those off uh, at an angle there. So that way, um, not really dovetail, but I guess just more of a slant there. You'll see here as I trim that up, just so you can see doesn't kind of go over the joy there or the peppermint. I thought that it needed to be shortened a little bit, but look at how cute this is. I think this is darling. It would be so cute like on a tiered tray or even just sitting out somewhere just to bring a little bit of joy to your space. I just thought this turned out absolutely beautiful. 
I found these cute little jars at Dollar Tree and I feel like they always have some type of little jar like this. They may differ a little bit, but these have this cute little space where you could put some like a little tag or something. So in order to get paint to stick to glass, I'm just going to put a little bit of Mod Podge down in that area and let that dry. And that way when I put, I'm gonna put a little bit of chalkboard paint on these, that way it will adhere to the glass and it won't just immediately scratch off. So I'm just gonna do that on all three of these in that little area. Now I just take some chalkboard paint. I'm just using chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree and I am just going to carefully brush that into this little area. You'll have to do at least two coats on here, possibly three, just depends on how thin you're doing your coats. The thinner the better I have learned with this. But I just take my time. I have a little bit of an angled brush that I can go in and get that curve as best I can. And the nice thing is, is where you have not put your Mod Podge, you would be able to go in with kind of like your finger or fingernail and kind of scratch off. So if you do go out of the lines, it's not a huge worry but on all three of these I just put this little bit of chalkboard paint down now you easily could uh, write with chalk uh, like a chalk marker or something to customize it that way of course we know that I don't freehand anything so I do just make a couple decals with my Cricut I have a one that says reindeer treats one that says Santa snacks and another that says Grinch goodies and I thought those were just super cute and then I am just taking two different kinds of twine here this is the Baker's twine in red and green and just tying around the top and look at how simple and easy and how cute those are I would love to know what kind of treats you would put inside of each of your little jars if you were to make these. This DIY would be so easy to recreate with any type of sign blank that you get either at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Dollar Tree, anywhere like that, an old sign that you might have. And you can use basically anything else that you have. I'm using a Christmas ornament in this one, but if there was some other little type of trinket or something, it would be super easy to use with that. But basically I'm just going to scrape all of the glitter off because we know that Dollar Tree is famous for their glitter that they put all over everything. And then I'm going to give this a really good paint of uh, coat, excuse me, of white chalk paint. And I'm going to go over it. I think it takes about two or three coats to get this completely covered to make sure that you don't see any of the background. I am going to use a piece of painter's tape as a spacer between to make some stripes on this. So I basically will lay a piece of painter's tape down, another one right underneath that for the spacer and then my next line and then I pull up the spacer to leave the negative space that I'm going to go in and paint. So since we are doing Christmas themed, I am going to do some red paint for my stripes. You wanna make sure that when you are using any type of stencil or tape like this, that you do clear off your sponge brush. I prefer to use a sponge brush. Um, it's not really a brush at all, so I don't know why I'm calling it that. <laughs> but my little painting sponge. But you can definitely use a stencil brush that is specifically for stenciling, but you want to just make sure that you seal the edges of the tape or your stencil with uh, dabbing it lightly on those and making sure that there is a little amount of paint. It's, it's better to do less paint and do more coats than go in with a big glob of paint, if that makes sense. So as you can tell, as I'm tearing off the tape here, I love the satisfying feeling of pulling this off and seeing nice, crisp, clean lines. I do want to make this look a little bit weathered and worn so of course I'm going to distress it because that's what farmhouse is to me so do whatever you'd like as far as your distressing technique or none at all would also be fine with this I mean it's Christmas it doesn't have to be distressed but for it to match with my decor and everything I am going to distress this I do sand and pay attention to the corners and I also go in with a brush and some antiquing wax and go around the edges to give this that uh, farmhouse worn look on the edges.
I do have this ornament from Dollar Tree that I am going to go and glue on here. Like I said, any other type of ornament that you have or any other type of trinket that you would like to use to glue on this would totally work. So I am just putting glue along the back of this, hot glue, and then I am just going to firmly place and hold this until it dries, com um, not until it dries completely, but just until it has a firm stick, if that makes sense to you. And then of course, since it's Christmas, I think that I'm going to make this into Rudolph, since I do love the movie Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the song. So I am going to put a little bit of hot glue on a little berry, and I am going to stick that on his nose there to make it look like a Rudolph. And look at how cute he is. I think this turned out so cute. It is so fun. I think this is just that cute little thing either to put like on a tear tray in your china hutch and a little shelf that you've got. Just something to tuck away into a nice little corner that you need to bring a little bit of fun Christmas spirit to. I would like to thank you so much for taking time to watch this compilation make a video. It really means a lot to me. Did your favorite make the list? Did you see something new that you enjoyed? I would love to know down in the comments, either one of those. I always love reading what you guys enjoy seeing. I hope that you have such an amazing day and I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. If you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.